Now, from the combined newsrooms of KARK4 and Fox 16, breaking news coverage. McCoy here at KRK4 and Fox 16 here in Little Rock. It is coming up on 1:30 here. We are standing by for the governor's daily COVID-19 briefing. We are expecting him at the state capitol here in just a few moments to give his daily coronavirus briefing to the state. This will be his first briefing since um, Friday, taking a brief break for the weekend. And uh, we are expecting him to um, uh, discuss the latest uh, COVID-19 cases, including hospitalizations and death. Something interesting uh, will be to, to see if he comments at all about uh, some new cases being reported at um, at least one school district in the state, and that is the Jacksonville North Pulaski School District, who announced about an hour ago that they have four teachers and 23 students now going into a quarantine after a Jacksonville Middle School student tested positive for the virus, um, and, and that test was happening over the weekend. Let's uh, quickly touch on yesterday's numbers, uh, 478 new COVID-19 cases across the state of Arkansas. Uh, as of Sunday, uh, since March, that brings the total to 60,800 cases reported, uh, more than uh, 5,600 active cases across the state of Arkansas currently, and there are 784 total deaths uh, related to COVID-19 in the state of Arkansas. We are waiting for the governor's daily COVID-19 briefing that's expected here in just a few moments while we wait for uh, the governor to, to come up. Let me set the scene for you. Uh, this is uh, the normal screen that we see uh, while we wait for the governor. That's what we call a slate would come down and we will um, shortly see the governor uh, come up to the podium and deliver his daily remarks related to COVID-19 in the state of Arkansas. While we wait on the governor, let's quickly touch on some of these cases that are happening across the state. The darker the blue, uh, the more COVID-19 is reported in a specific county. You can see if we start in Pulaski County here, there are 685 active cases of the coronavirus, 105 total deaths, but there's been a total uh, positive number of 7,024 cases across the entire uh, Pulaski County area. You can see that uh, the, the uh, center blue here, you have Saline County, where there's a total of 205 active cases of COVID-19, specifically in Saline County, 12 total deaths, and a total uh, positive case count of 1,567 since they've started keeping all of these tallies. This is a pretty good resource for anyone who may want to check it out. You can certainly do that on our websites. Um, we have a link to this map available for, for anyone that wants to go uh, and, and maybe look at their specific county. And you can even go into active cases. Let's cl click on active cases and you can somewhat see a, a slight change between active and total cases here as we uh, kind of switch back and forth here. Uh, so these are specific to active cases. If we move up to Northwest Arkansas, up in Benton County, you can see that there's um, total positive cases at 245 with just over 5,000 since the pandemic started. I'm looking right now at our screen. It looks like the governor is coming up. Let's tune in and listen to the governor's daily COVID-19 briefing. COVID-19 daily update. I'm uh, pleased to be joined by uh, Secretary Johnny Key of the Department of Education. I also have uh, Director Kirk Lane who is our drug director in Arkansas, part of our uh, DHS. Uh, and then also Dr. Uh, of course, uh, Jose Romero, uh, Secretary of Health. And then he's uh, accompanied by Dr. Sima, uh, who uh, might have a comment on our data and how we uh, are handling that and a uh, uh, correction on some of our data. Uh, first, I wanted to mention that uh, this is international opioid uh, Awareness Day, and I am delighted to announce that today uh, we have received a $21 million grant uh, for opioid and stimulant abuse in Arkansas. Uh, the fact that Arkansas uh, is really one of four states that has had a decline in death deaths as a result of opioid abuse is good news, but. Uh, we still have a continued challenge with opioid abuse and certainly with methamphetamines 
uh, this $21 million grant will allow us uh, to uh, work harder on education, on treatment, on recovery, uh, and this will be a very good boost uh, that we have received from SAMHSA. Uh, this will allow us to utilize these funds for medically assisted treatment as well as other uh, treatment efforts across the state, uh, including uh, the challenge that we face with uh, methamphetamine. And Director Lane will be uh, working hard to make sure these funds are used uh, wisely and effectively and that $21 million will be over the next two years. Uh, let me go to the uh, case report. Uh, we had an additional 368 cases over the last 24 hours. That brings us to 61,224 cases. Uh, we have an additional 29 that are hospitalized. Uh, that brings us to 420. Now, let me just say that on our hospitalizations, that's way below our height, uh, our top uh, in terms of hospitalizations, but the fact that we've had 29 increase really reflects what happens whenever you have an uptick in cases. Over time, it leads to an increase in hospitalizations. We have an additional 13 uh, deaths. That brings us to 797 Arkansans. Uh, testing, we've tested 4,542 over the last 24 hours and I'll go through that in more detail uh, shortly. Uh, Secretary Romero will talk about the counties uh, that have contributed to that, as well as a little bit more information on those deaths. Uh, and so let's go to the uh, slides, and uh, this again shows the number of new cases, and over the weekend you can see uh, that we had uh, one day of decline that was a smaller number, and it was a very robust testing day uh, at that time. Today, you can see uh, where our cases are. Uh, the rolling average is the next one, and of course, uh, because we had a couple high days last week, uh, we have an upswing in our graph. We want that to go down. Hopefully, it will, and today uh, will help reflect that. Uh, and then our hospitalizations, you can see uh, where we were at the top, close to 520. Now we're at 420, uh, but uh, we uh, you know, anytime you have an increase in cases as a lagging indicator, hospitalizations are going to go up some. And then uh, this is the, I just wanted to point this out. Uh, the first bar graph or the last bar graph there is not that relevant because it's just, uh, you know, we haven't completed our week yet. But the others, and this is the daily average of new cases in Arkansas by week. And here, uh, you can see that we had a couple of weeks of decline, and then our last week we were up a little bit, over 600 average per day, and uh, hopefully this week will be different from that. And then the uh, uh, testing, uh, here again, uh, of course it's uh, Monday after the weekend, our testing is down a little bit, uh, public health lab continues to do well, uh, that is in the white, the reds, the commercial labs, I uh, hope it'll go back to what it was in the last three days, which was very, very strong. And then you can see the seven-day rolling average for positivity. Uh, here again is the 10% uh, rate that CDC cites. Uh, we are down below that, uh, closer to the 8.2%. Uh, uh, and then the next one, uh, I wanted to show where we are in our testing. Uh, over the month, of course, we had a, a uh, goal that uh, Dr. Nate Smith talked me into, uh, and it was high. It was 200,000. Of that, we were doing 190,000 was our goal for uh, the COVID-19 test, the PCR test, and the other 10,000, our goal was to be the antigen test. Uh, and you can see we've done very, very well. If you do 180,000, that is... 6% of our population. That's an extraordinary, uh, robust number that you would be doing. And you have, uh, uh, we have one more day left, so we could get up even higher than that. Well, obviously, we will in one more day. And then the next one shows uh, the uh, number of antigen tests. And so I wanted to be able to show that uh, 
through the course, and this is for the month, starting August 1, that goes each day. It's accumulative as to what we've done on antigen tests, 4,644. And it'd be interesting to know who goes in to get an antigen test. Uh, how are they different than somebody that goes in to get a PCR test? Is there a different, uh, something different that motivates them? Is it something they want to get a quick turnaround on, which is part of the benefit from the antigen test? Uh, but they're not quite as available as a PCR test, and then not that many are going to get those right now. The next one, and I've been asked, well, what's the positivity rate uh, for the antigen test? And uh, the positivity rate, uh, as you can see, is higher for the antigen test uh, overall, uh, although it varies by day. Uh, but it, overall, the last few days, it's been higher than what it has been in our PCR test. So it could be that somebody who feels ill, they want to get a quick turnaround, they go in and they get the test. Uh, but uh, we want to be able to present uh, that as well. And then I believe that's uh, all of those. I wanted to uh, recognize uh, Dr. Romero, uh, but before we've had a correction that some uh, astute observers might have noticed over the last 24 hours, we've had 11,300 tests added uh, into the system. Uh, I believe all of these were uh, negative tests uh, that were added into the system because uh, of a commercial lab that was not uh, reporting all of the negative tests, tests to the Department of Health, uh, but we've got that corrected. That is now entered, and so those numbers will be corrected, and Dr. Romero uh, will go through his uh, information. I asked Dr. Seema if he could come up and just elaborate on that as well. And then I wanted Secretary Key to talk a little bit about uh, any developments news-wise in the schools. Dr. Romero. <clears throat> Thank you, Governor. So um, a little more detail. Um, with regard to ventilator use, um, that has increased by three, um, but it's still low at uh, 87. Um, with regard to the deaths, as mentioned uh, by the Governor, there were 797 deaths. Uh, that's an increase of 13. Six of these are delayed reporting, uh, coming from uh, June uh, on one and uh, five others from July. Um, two of the deaths occurred in nursing homes without a cluster, and uh, there were no correctional uh, facility deaths. Um, our active cases at this time are uh, 5,466. Um, the governor has mentioned the testing. Uh, with regard to the counties, there are only four counties uh, which report greater than 20 cases each. Um, Pulaski County still is in the lead at 50. Uh, second uh, is Pope, 41. Uh, Benton, uh, 30, and uh, Garland County at 21. Um, before I uh, turn over the podium to Dr. Sima to offer some comments about the added uh, tests, um, I want to bring to your attention some testing uh, that will be done uh, this week um, at uh, different sites across the state. Um, so we're having five uh, testing sites, um, the first of which is uh, on the 31st today at Craighead, Jonesboro. Um, a, a second one will be tomorrow um, at Washington County in Fayetteville. Um, we'll be having uh, testing on the second at uh, uh, Jefferson County at Pine Bluff. And then uh, on the third of uh, this month, we'll be doing two testing um, uh, drives at Jonesboro, Clarksville, and uh, Garland County in Hot Springs. Um, because of the concern of cases that are arising on the campuses, uh, we've deployed uh, seven, eight. Um, uh, point of care tests uh, to universities across the state, and we'll be monitoring that uh, very closely um, in the in the future. Uh, this is not unlike what is being seen at other uh, in other in other states uh, that with schools being open. Uh, but we're taking a proactive case uh, uh, stance and trying to um, identify these cases. So um, I will uh, ask Dr. Simone to come up and uh, offer some words. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Romero, Governor. Uh, just to reiterate what the Governor uh, are, has already said, uh, we did add over 11,300 uh, negative tests to our database. Uh, I do want to be clear that for this particular uh, commercial lab, we have been receiving positive results, and we continue to receive positive results. Uh, the only issue was the negative results, and we have since 
uh, fix that issue. Um, the, the lab has been a great partner uh, throughout this entire process. I do want to mention that the particular counties that were affected the most uh, were Benton County with more than 2,000 tests added and then Washington County with more than 6,000 tests added. So we should see their cumulative uh, percent positivity rate uh, decline marginally. Thank you. Uh, today I'm going to report that we've had two school districts in the state that have modified their operations uh, under the, uh, the Ready for Learning plan and under our response level documents. Uh, these are cross county uh, school district. They have, they moved today to virtual instruction for their high school and are using this day to work with our team at the, the division uh, to assess what they need to do moving forward. Uh, likewise, Searcy County School District, Marshall High School, uh, grades 9 through 12. Uh, in both of these cases, uh, they have been impacted by uh, loss of staffing due to quarantines. So it's not a high level of cases, but it's because of the cases they have had resulted in uh, a number of uh, quarantines that caused them to uh, not be able to carry on uh, their typical on-site operations. But with both of these districts, we will continue to work with them uh, to get them back going. Um, but this is a good example of how our Ready for Learning plan is being implemented as they still have a number of their grades uh, that are carrying on as usual on site. Uh, thank you, Johnny. With that, we will uh, take any questions. Leslie. Uh, this morning, uh, Senate committee downstairs had witnesses that um, uh, one of them believes that the efficacy of masks is superstition and that making them, making people wear them is unconstitutional. Another witness uh, impugned really the character of Dr. Romero and uh, yet another lawmaker said it was time to open that he was mad at you. <laughs> and so really what I'm wondering is, do you worry about the impact on public health because of these statements and this sort of campaign by the Senate? Well, anytime you have confusing public messages, it's, it can reflect challenges as to what do people know, I mean, how do they respond, uh, what should they be doing. Uh, I, we've had a consensus in our country uh, from the medical community uh, to public leaders that indicate that wearing a mask is something that we can do individually. It's a conservative principle, which is individual responsibility toward others. Uh, and it's a tool that we can use without having to close businesses and put more restrictions on. And so I get the report from the White House Coronavirus Task Force every week, uh, which includes, I mean, the, the Trump administration is telling me uh, I should be closing bars, putting further restrictions on restaurants, and taking these steps. And uh, we're resisting doing that because we have a mask mandate in place, and that's the tool that we can all use individually. And so, sure, I wish there was a unified message uh, from, uh, from Washington all the way through the states, but we have a diversity of opinion in America, and you have the freedom to express and to uh, get that information out. So uh, Dr. Romero testified at that hearing today, and so uh, I, I hope that uh, all the information was out there and the public can make good decisions. Uh, but I, I do have confidence in Dr. Romero and his approach, and that's the guidance that I follow. I don't follow uh, the guidance from somebody from Texas. I don't follow, uh, I listen to everybody's guidance and information, but it's Dr. Romero and the Department of Health team that I have confidence in, and that's who we're listening to. I wanna get an update on, there was an order of antigen tests earlier, and the announcement was that those would be going to local public health units. Uh, specifically with a focus on maybe doing testing in the high schools. Can we get an update on how many of those have been shipped around the state and how many tests are being done on school districts? Uh, yes, and I'll ask uh, Stephanie uh, Williams, our chief of staff, if, if I don't, to come up there if you've got something to add to that. Uh, but 
uh, we have uh, received our order of antigen kits, uh, a partial order, and so that has been deployed to some of our uh, county health units with the priority of being utilized for uh, our K through 12 education. And so uh, we are anxious to receive more so that we can uh, utilize that in a, uh, a broader way, but uh, we, that is being implemented and it is being utilized. Yes. What were your observations from the salt bowl and do you question moving forward with football? Uh, great question. And uh, I thought the uh, salt bowl uh, handled it very, very well in terms of their safety precautions. You had the players spread out along the field so that other than their competition, uh, they were uh, distancing themselves. Uh, you had uh, uh, the pep squad, uh, all of them having distancing in the stands. Uh, you had, uh, I, and of course I watched it because I was there, and you had uh, mask wearing by those in the stands, and you had uh, social distancing. Now, I did see some comments on social media. They say, well, not everybody was wearing a mask. Well, uh, we want everybody to wear a mask, uh, but the fact is that uh, we want you to socially distance and wear a mask. Now, you know, if, if you're sitting 50 feet away from somebody else uh, and you don't take your mask off, we're probably not going to fuss too hard because you're dramatically socially distanced. And there was a lot of those there, but you might have had a singular picture of someone without a mask. And then you also have uh, groups that are together. You might have six people together that are not socially distanced, but if they come as a family unit, then that is permissible. But we still you know, should be in that environment wearing a mask as well as socially distanced when it's uh, practical and it's not uh, a family that's involved. I thought they did well, though. Uh, Eddie was there. He was the star of the show. And, uh, uh, but uh, it was a good event. Dr. Romero, did you have any other observations there? And Secretary Key, you were there. What did you think? <laughs> With the uh, announcement that Cross County is moving to remote learning, and then uh, was it Marshall High School in Searcy County, do you have an update on how many uh, school districts are totally or partially doing remote learning at this point? So besides uh, KIPP last week, those are the two that uh, have been added to the list. Uh, everyone else, I mean, we, we get reports on a regular basis uh, throughout the weekend, uh, but those are the two that uh, when they looked at their staffing concerns, uh, saw that there would be some great challenges uh, if they opened up in person today. Um, I would commend them because they did look very carefully uh, at uh, if, if they could isolate uh, where the problem was, and they did. And in both cases, it was at their high school level. lack of adults to run the schools because of quarantine. Do you see this being a widespread issue in our state, a big concern for our superintendents? Well, it's very important that whenever we do the contact tracing that we do it accurately and that we don't uh, 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 quarantine those that have socially distanced or they've worn a mask and that the right judgments are made there. Uh, I think they're doing a great job. I've sort of got the ground truth on a few of those instances. Uh, I see that as a periodic problem uh, that will be uh, solved over time and that uh, it might be a temporary interruption but not uh, something that will impact uh, education across the state. Uh, is there any questions uh, remotely? Yeah. Uh, yeah Governor Hutchinson, this is Clarissa with KNWA News. Um, quick question. A group of about 15 legislators say they plan to file a lawsuit against the Department of Health to essentially end the state of emergency. What is your response to this? My, my response to that is that uh, from my understanding of their uh, intended lawsuit is that they believe any public health regulations uh, such as a restriction uh, or uh, making some other requirement uh, on uh, even War Memorial Stadium, that any of those type of public health guidelines should be approved by the General Assembly. Uh, I disagree with that completely. The General Assembly has given uh, 
ability for public health guidelines by statute, uh, the ability for the executive branch to manage during a pandemic. And you cannot have public health guidelines delayed by uh, three or four weeks as they might go through a legislative process. Uh, and I want to have confidence in our public health team, which is composed of epidemiologists, public health officials that have been trained in dealing with pandemic. Uh, I trust them to do it versus uh, a legislative review. Uh, and so, uh, you know, anybody can file a lawsuit, but uh, my response is that I have confidence in our public health team and the steps they've taken, and they're acting uh, with authority that has been given uh, necessarily uh, by the General Assembly uh, so they can act appropriately to protect public health. Uh, Andrew DeMillo, I heard your voice. Yeah, uh, thank you, Governor. I um, wanted to ask uh, you or Dr. Romero about uh, an update on the concern that was expressed uh, fri no, Friday about outbreaks at college campuses. It looked like there was a large number of cases uh, from Washington County over the weekend. Uh, wanted to see if that was that connected to uh, University of Arkansas and also wanted to, related to that, wanted to see, is there a number that uh, you or the health department in terms of cases where you think the, the schools need to look at scale, scaling back activities or go, going, to, uh, going to online classes at, at, at the colleges and universities? Uh, let me ask the last part of the question. I'll turn it over to Dr. Romero, but uh, you know, under our, we, we established public health guidelines, but the universities have a great deal of discretion as to how uh, they want to bring the students back, how they're going to uh, maintain safety on the campus. I think they've done a very good job. Uh, the General Assembly uh, has uh, put money uh, behind uh, our recommendations uh, f and partnership between higher education and the public and the Department of Health and UAMS to make sure we can enhance testing and tracing. So they've got a good plan in place. Uh, I certainly hope that they will be able to continue classes, but in order to continue classes, it requires uh, self-discipline by the students uh, and they have to understand the seriousness of it and that they and the cost of not uh, following those guidelines that uh, are on campus to protect themselves and uh, when they're off campus as well. So there's a high, expectation, high expectation level for the students to do the right thing, to listen to these, take it seriously. Most of them are, uh, but the others uh, that don't uh, cause a problem. But I want us to be able to continue uh, that uh, online, in, uh, that uh, in-course instruction, on-campus instruction that's so important to the full development of our students uh, as they go through higher education. Thank you for that question. So um, we have no threshold at which uh, once a school has reached uh, will be changed with regard to, to, to classes. Um, as mentioned last week, uh, we are always consulting with the Department of Education and with the uh, superintendents, and we'll make individual decisions for each individual school as, they, as the situation arises. Other questions? Uh, hey, Governor, it's Mitch at KRK4 on Fox 16. All right, Mitch, speak up a little bit. Okay, sorry about that. Um, we are, some parents are, are talking, um, sharing some concerns about a school bus driver up in the Russellville area who had possibly died from COVID-19. Is that something that your office or the Department of Health has been notified about? Or um, are there any precautions in place for those students that may have had contact with that school bus driver? Uh, we uh, are aware of that. Uh, we are looking into that from a factional standpoint. And first of all, this is a, a, a great loss. It's a human tragedy. We're very, very sorry and express our regret uh, about uh, that loss and uh, death. But Stephanie, do you have the dates that you referenced? Are you a good one to you have that on the testing time frames? As 
the governor said, we're still checking into that situation, but based on what we know now, the testing time frame would seem to indicate um, that it wasn't an infection that was contracted after the start of school, but rather um, from the community and then um, subsequently developed as the week progressed after school started. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, uh, yes, on, on the, the table uh, we have a question. On the uh, testing goals, two straight months, the state's fallen short of those uh, goals. Can you comment on just the continued issues that the state's had in getting commercial PCR tests? And then what's your goal going to be for the month of September? Uh, we will uh, set that goal shortly and uh, let you know what that goal is for September. Uh, I'm encouraged the fact that uh, it appears the commercial testing labs are uh, accelerating uh, their production, reducing their turnaround time. All of those are good indications, and so we're, in, we're encouraged by that. The screening of school personnel has, is left at the district level. Uh, some districts are screening and, and some are not. Uh, but the, and there is no testing requirement for bus drivers uh, or for other school personnel. There is a requirement to wear a mask. There is a yes, there is a requirement to wear a mask. Uh, so all bus drivers are, are to wear a mask. Um, and any of the other adults that are on that bus, if there are aides uh, or other staff on the bus, they must wear a mask as well. Bus driver did in fact die from COVID infection. Uh, I'm not confirming it. <laughs> uh, so I, I, that that is, uh, we're still looking into the facts of that. Uh, any other? Was there any other question remotely? For you? Yes, Governor. Hey, Governor. This is Crystal oh, Martinez oh. with KNWA News. Uh, I wanted to ask you, there was a new CDC report that shows 94% of COVID-19 deaths had contributing conditions. So that's nationwide. When it comes to Arkansas, how many of our total deaths are people who had underlying conditions? And do we know the top most common underlying conditions? Uh, I'm, I'll defer to Dr. Romero and we do have, we do report statistics and they're on our website in terms of some of the underlying conditions. Uh, but Dr. Romero? So I'm not prepared to give you exact numbers, but the vast majority of individuals who have succumbed to COVID this, the infection do have comorbid conditions. We do track that. We can provide that information if you desire. Uh, yes, please. And I do have a second question. When it comes to hospitalizations, we've reported, you know, a fluctuation. Sometimes it's less than the day before. Sometimes it's more. But also the death rate seems to stay pretty consistent at a, you know, over a dozen a day. But I wanted to ask, well, is there data that's going to be provided that shows out of those hospitalizations, how many contributed to the recovery total versus how many contributed to the death total? Uh that's a good question. Let's see if we can address maybe both that question and the other question tomorrow. We'll try to have those, that data that we can present because those are uh, excellent review points that we ought to visit uh, periodically. Uh, next question. Governor, it's Kendall with 4029. This was in relation to Andrew's question earlier, but we know um, the ADH is doing mass testing tomorrow through Thursday at the University of Arkansas. And we just wanted to know if you have a goal for the number of people you'd like to see tested and how will this mass testing help out the university? Uh, I don't have a specific number. I think the answer is we would like to have everyone uh, that uh, has a need for it or uh, believe they might have been uh, in circumstances that might have exposed them to get a test. Uh, that's what we encourage, and uh, we hope that there'll be a good result from that. Dr. Romero, do you have anything else there? And then uh, is there a final question? I think I heard one more voice there. Are we good? Uh, with that, uh, thank you, and you all have a good afternoon, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Thank you.
That was the governor's daily COVID-19 briefing at the state capitol. He announced uh, several new cases of COVID-19 uh, across the state. Um, in the 300s, in fact, a 300 and 68 new cases of COVID-19. That brings Arkansas's total to 61,224. There are additional 29 hospitalizations, which brings us to 420 and 13 additional deaths, bringing us to 797. Uh, we have learned about two school districts that have some kind of school uh, in a virtual learning status, and that's the Cross County School District, uh, their high school, and then the Searcy County School District, Marshall High School, both in a virtual learning status right now, uh, remote learning because oh, there are so many staff members in quarantine. That is the very latest from the governor's daily COVID-19 briefing. It's just after two o'clock. We will have full coverage on COVID-19 coming up on KRK 4 News at 4 and Fox 16 News at 530. Of course, breaking news as it happens all day long right here across all of our digital platforms and the very latest on COVID-19 at four o'clock. For now, I'm Mitch McCoy. Have a great afternoon. This has been breaking news coverage from the combined newsrooms of KARK4 and Fox 16.